Hi everyone, this is Benny from RE. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create an advanced velvet material using V-Ray and 3ds Max. On the left here, we have our reference image that we use to create this render on the right. And here is a close-up of that same material. And I'm just going to be going through all the different components of the velvet and breaking down this material for you. So I'll just start by closing out those images. And here we have our max scene. Just before I begin with the material, I'll show you what this looks like. So it's a basic floor and wall, and we have a few lights that are going to be illuminating the model. The model is already unwrapped, so we're not going to be going over that in the video. And we have two camera angles, this full shot, and this detail shot that we'll be using to show the detail of the material we're creating. So I'll just go back to my full shot, and I'll just start by pressing M on my keyboard to open up my material editor. And you see here we have our finalized velvet material. I know it looks a little bit complicated, but I'm going to go through all the different components and break down all the different characteristics of velvet. So I already created a new tab with my velvet, uh, just a new tab named velvet, and I've already brought in a few bitmaps. So the first one here is a reference image that I brought in just so that we can color pick uh, some of our main colors that we're going to be using in our material. I've also already brought in a fabric material uh, that I uh, found using this reference. So my reference has somewhat of a linen, uh, stripey, and polyester fabric. So I brought in something similar and I've made it monochrome and increased the contrast slightly. I also have this grunge texture that I've created uh, using a series of composite nodes, but I will I will be explaining that once uh, we get to that part of the material. So I'm just going to begin by creating a new V-Ray material. I already have it typed in here, and I'm just going to assign that to my model. And I'll start just by opening up uh, my frame buffer and starting my IPR rendering. I'm just going to have IPR running uh, throughout the whole video just so we can see what's going on live. So there are many ways to start with this velvet. Some people start with the uh, actual physical texture as in like the bump map or the normal map. Um, we're actually going to start with the color just because I think that's the most complicated part of this velvet material. So I'll begin just by creating a V-Ray color node and bringing that into the material editor and I'll drag that into my diffuse map. So we're going to do all of our color picking from this reference image here so we're not going to have to leave max to do that. So I'll just click on my color, uh, V-Ray color node, click on color here, click on our uh, picker tool and pick uh, a color somewhere in between dark and light. So our darkest values might be here and our lightest values might be this top part here. So we'll just choose something uh, that's kind of the middle and that'll be our base color. So the way I'm going to be showing you how to make this model is by adding more and more levels of complexity until we get to a finalized image that we want. Uh, so adding our color, base color is gonna be the first basic level of complexity. The next is going to be combining this color with a fabric material or a fabric bitmap, uh, and this will uh, allow us to have a colored fabric bitmap uh, that will create more realism with our material. So the way we're going to do that is by creating a composite node and combining our V-Ray color. So I'll plug that into layer one and add two layers and plug my fabric into layer two. And so we can choose the blending mode, and I'm going to choose soft light. And what that will do is we'll take any color above 50% gray here and lighten my uh, orange swatch, orange yellow swatch. And then anything below 50% 50 50 gray will darken my uh, swatch. So I'll plug that into my diffuse map. And there we go. You're not going to really be able to see it from this distance. So I'll just go into the close-up shot and I'll let that run uh, as it goes. 
So the next layer of complexity we can add is uh, taking into account all of these different colors that make up velvet. So velvet is going to be different from most fabrics in its construction. It is, it's somewhere in between a weave and a tufted uh, texture. By this I mean there are actually individual strands, strands that uh, stand on the surface of our uh, velvet fabric. And what that will do is each of those different fabrics, each of those different fabric strands will relate to the light differently. What I mean by this is that uh, those fabric strands that face directly towards the camera, so you can imagine these fabric strands are sticking out right towards the camera or right towards our eye, are going to appear darker than those fabric stand, strands that are facing away from the camera. And what this is going to do is giving you this kind of gradient-like effect where towards the edges the fabric looks different than when it faces us directly on. And of course you'll notice that there's a lot of variation in how this happens, and that's because either the fabrics are moved by someone's hand or someone sitting in the chair, and so they will face a different direction and then catch the light differently. Uh, also, sometimes the fabric's strands cast shadow on other fabric strands, which create different effects. So, uh, we can do this Currently, there are models that do this using microgeometry that calculate all the different uh, microstrands. However, nothing has really been created that allows you to use this kind of technique in a practical workflow. So we're not going to be able to actually physically recreate all the different strands to recreate the exact effect of velvet. But what we can do instead in 3ds Max and V-Ray is use a falloff node, which has a similar effect to when the fabric strands look different from when we're looking directly at them versus when we look at them at a grazing angle. So I'm just going to uh, open up a falloff node and explain a little bit how it works and how it relates to our velvet material. So I'll just type in falloff here and I'm just going to plug that right into my diffuse and I'll switch back to my full view. So the falloff node uh, in 3ds Max works with our current settings. So our current settings are going to be perpendicular, parallel, and viewing direction, camera Z axis. So the simplest way to explain this is that uh, anything directly facing the camera, such as uh, those velvet strands, are going to appear one color. And then anything facing away from the camera, so the tops of these, or as this turns uh, away, will be another color. And this is going off the normals of our model and how that relates to uh, our camera. So if you can imagine all the different faces with their normals, whatever normal direction. So these normal arrows are directly facing the camera, so those will appear darker. And as those normal arrows turn away from the camera more and more, uh, they appear lighter. So I'll just change these colors just to give you a clearer view. So I'll make this one green, make this one red. So the top view in our current selection is going to be those parts that are directly facing the camera, and the red are going to be those that are facing away from the camera. And then you can see the yellow in between is going to be those middle ground between the two. And we can actually see this visually represented in this uh, mixed curve down below with this gradient. So what this is going to move from in its simplest terms is on this side, of the graph will be all of those parts of the model that are directly facing the camera, so that'll be these green parts, and then this part of the graph is going to be all of those parts that are facing away from the camera, that have their normals uh, facing away from the viewing direction. So what this map actually shows is that as uh, everything that's facing away from the camera is going to be that darkest color, so everything is going, or whatever color we have assigned, so will be this green color, and then everything facing away from the camera will be that red color. And then in between is just going to be a slow uh, linear change between the two. Gradual is probably a better word than slow. And so we can make any changes to this curve that we want to affect uh, how these two colors gradiate in between each other. So say, for example, I right-click on this node and change it to a Bezier. And before looking at this, we can just visually explain it. What this shows is that at uh, parts of the model that are facing directly to the camera will be green, 
and they'll mostly stay green until the end. They'll rapidly ramp up to being uh, red. And you'll see at the edges, we'll only catch those red values. So it's just here and here. Now we can uh, manipulate this graph to be whatever we want and to have whatever desired effect that we want uh, to switch between our different color. So for now, we're just going to look at our model and decide what kind of falloff that we want. So you can see actually the model is mostly, our reference image is mostly this yellow color and it really only gradiates towards this darker color uh, right at the end. So what that will look like in our falloff map is probably something, uh, something close to this, where our model is really only green at those parts of the model that are directly facing away, and then it rapidly switches to being our lighter value, which is going to be our lighter value here. So visually, I can just plug this into map two and I will just change this to black just to visually show you what that will look like. So really we only have our dark values directly when the camera is facing away from us and then as that uh, turns directly when it's facing the camera then as that turns away we'll get these lighter values. We're not actually going to use black uh, just because that's not accurate to the model. So what we're going to do instead is just duplicate. We're not going to duplicate our fabric. We're just going to duplicate the color node with our fabric combined and choose a color that is in our darker range. And plug that in here. Okay, great. Now for the next level of complexity, you'll notice um, that what we get is kind of a color fall off that doesn't really match the model in my eyes, and that we have this dark value that rapidly turns into this lighter value, which is accurate in terms of how the fall off works, but it's not accurate in terms of color. I think we really need kind of this intermediate orange in between this uh, yellow value and this darker value. And we actually can incorporate that into the falloff. You'll see most of our model here, uh, most of the falloff on the darker values are actually this lighter orange color and really only wraps up, uh, ramps up to this black value towards the end. So we actually can recreate it, that effect uh, using another falloff. So I'll just make this easy by duplicating this falloff here and plugging that into my map too. And then what we'll do is duplicate this color, plug this here. So now we'll have another fall off here and all we have to do is color select our lighter color here. Now again, we only really want that dark value to come at the very base or at the very end of our fall off. So we can do that just by affecting this map and making this a bit more extreme by increasing this here. So what this is saying is that the black value of this falloff will only show up when the parts of the model are directly facing the camera and then it will rapidly turn off into this uh, lighter orange value. So that's what we'll see here. As you see, really only the darker values are at these base points. And we'll just have to adjust this to get it to be exactly where we want it to be. Okay, great. So now I think we're looking right with our fall off. Now the next step is just to add our variation. 
And what I mean by this, uh, as I was talking about earlier, uh, Velvet has this effect where if strands are moved in different areas, such as over here uh, or over here, we get different falloff values. So even in these darker areas, we get these lighter values. And here in the darker values, we get lighter, uh, lighter values as well. So the best way I've found to recreate this specific effect is actually by creating another falloff. So say, for instance, we have this one falloff here that goes from this dark value to this uh, lighter dark value to this base color. If we create another falloff that goes from this uh, lighter value to this really light value and then combine them using a uh, grunge map, we can simulate a similar effect. So now noticing the model, uh, I'm looking maybe we can bring more of this orange value. Uh, this is looking a little bit light. And this is something you'll often have to do with adjusting falloffs is adjusting as you add more, you'll have to adjust them as we go. So I'm going to do something closer to this just to bring in a few more of those darker values. I'll leave something like that for now. Okay, so the way we're going to create our next falloff is actually just by uh, duplicating part of this node structure. So I'll grab these, this one here, and click while holding shift and drag it to duplicate it. And I'm not going to add uh, another complex falloff into this one, so we'll just have the two colors uh, falling off like this. And for my lighter value, as I said, I'm going to choose this really light value that's on the top here. And for the darker value, I'll choose the lighter areas of this dark side. So maybe somewhere like that. You notice it'll be pretty similar to this value here. OK, so now the question is, how do we combine these two together? So there's a few ways to do it. You can use a mixed curve, or you can use a composite node. I'm going to be using a mixed curve, or I'll be using actually a composite node to combine these. So I'll just go to, I can type it in here, I can right click, and go to maps, general, and then composite. And I'm actually going to zoom in for this part just to show you what it looks like. So you can see here really clearly what that fall off looks like. Uh, so all of these parts that are directly facing the camera are this darker value. And as they turn away on these curves of the cushions, they become lighter. And so for the composite, I'll just create two layers and plug my darker value into layer one and my lighter value into layer two. Now to combine these, I'm going to be using this mixed curve, uh, sorry, this composite structure that I've created before. Uh, this one I found works specifically for the type of velvet that I'm creating, but the best way to do this is just to analyze what these different fall off, uh, what these different uh, kind of grunge area looks like and create a map that works best for you, whatever velvet texture you're creating. Um, they are going to be fairly complicated because, because you can see this kind of varies a lot. Uh, how this changes. Uh, it's like hand swipes. It's also different parts of the fabric that are brushed. Oftentimes in something, say like this photo shoot, they'll intentionally brush the velvet to show off the material. So you might need some brush strokes or something like that to make it look realistic. Um, so what I've done is actually just taken a basic kind of smoky texture um, as well as this fabric velvet swipey texture that I sourced. And I've made both of those monochrome and increased the contrast. Um, and then for the smoky texture, I actually combined it with my fabric just to give it a uh, texture that I think will mesh better uh, once it's me meshed with this diffused fabric texture. And obviously that was looking a little bit too dark, so I just lightened it up. And I combined that with my darkened and uh, black and white velvet texture. So 
the color corrects, I'm not going to explain it in too much detail how they work, but basically what I did was just change the contrast and change the gamma values uh, so that uh, they can look exactly how I want. Again, you could do this in Photoshop uh, to get a grunge texture that works best for you. Um, I just did it in Max because I already had all the textures here to use. So I actually combined these two uh, with a soft light, so I just put a soft light on top of this velvet texture. Uh, so these are combined rather subtly. So what I'll do is I'll actually just plug this into the mask layer for layer two. And so what that will do is mask off um, my lighter value, and then I'll plug that right into my diffuse. And what you should see is that uh, all the lighter parts of this fabric will show this lighter value. So we'll get all these different variations in the texture. And this is, uh, of course, not an exact physical simulation of what's happening with the velvet because we're not actually moving these strands, but this is a, a pretty close simulation to what that looks like. So I'll just zoom out to the full shot just so you can see what we have. And of course, we can adjust our fall off uh, as needed to gear it more towards the darker values or the lighter values. So just to add another layer of complexity to this model, um, and something that I think adds a bit of realism, is we notice that at the edges of this model, uh, reference image actually, we don't really see that variation. More of what we see is just that light value shining through. So you might predict that we're gonna be using a fall off node for this actually with our composite. So what we'll do is have uh, all values that are either facing directly to the camera and most values that are facing away from the camera to have this uh, grunge texture separate the lighter and darker values. But what we want is that at the very edges, we don't want this grunge texture. All we want is that lighter value to catch the light, uh, lighter value to uh, show through so that we can just have this kind of sleek edge without any grunge at it. So what we can do is just create a fall off and plug our grunge value into the darker texture. And again, what we want is we mostly want our grunge texture to happen uh, for most viewing angles. And it's only at the very end we want just that uh, fabric line, that uh, clean fabric line without any grunge. So I'll plug that into layer two. And you'll see right now uh, what's happening is that we have the grunge at those parts that are facing the camera. And then as it falls away from the camera, uh, that grunge disappears. So we're, that's happening in a linear fashion. We don't want that. We want it to be more exponential at the end. So I'll just create a Bezier corner and drag this down till we get something uh, that looks about right. I think something like that works. Okay. Now, basically what from here on is just adding final touches uh, to the model, uh, to the material, sorry. And the way we're gonna do that first is just by plugging in uh, this uh, color corrected fabric into our bump. That'll give us our bump. We can, you know, of course, make this more complicated by adding, um, say a uh, placement map or a normal map, but for now I'm just gonna use the bump and I'll also plug that into my reflect gloss just to make it easy. And I'll just zoom in on the close-up shot for this. So the final thing we have to do is uh, add a reflect map to our material. And the easiest way to do this would just be to plug in um, our already created fall off into our reflect map and what this will do is that all of these colors would reflect all the colors that they are 
by which I mean the darker values would be less reflective and then the lighter values would be more reflective until we get to these really light areas that would be uh, almost perfectly reflective. Um, however, velvet more realistically is uh, reflective throughout except for the darkest values. So uh, at these darkest values here, we don't want it to be reflective, but throughout the rest of uh, the material, we want it to be about the same level of reflectivity. So we're going to create another falloff uh, structure to do that. Uh, since we have everything already created, it's really only going to take a second. Uh, so if I just select all these falloffs here and my composite and drag this down and plug that into my reflect, uh, what you'll see, it, it'll look brighter because it will be more reflective. And again, this is where um, all of the values just reflect what they are. So again, these dark areas are going to be less reflective. And then the lighter areas are going to be more reflective. Um, so what I want, again, is that uh, I just want the model to be mostly ref reflective except for the dark values. So I'm just going to change all my maps to look something like this. So uh, dark values not so reflective, and then it uh, moves up to a general level of reflectance. Of course, this doesn't have to be totally exact, just something close, something like that, and something like that. Okay. And we'll just go back to my full shot. So from here, we can make uh, any adjustments that we need. Um, I'm noticing that this might be a little bit too light, and I just want to uh, have some of these darker values shine through. Uh, so what I can do is just go to this fall off here and uh, make this curve more exponential so that most of the values are actually in the darker range. And I can do something like that, and that will be a bit closer to what our reference looks like. I just want to check this fall off just to see what that looks like. And I think that is looking good as uh, we only have those light values appearing on the edges. Thank you for watching this video and please check out our YouTube channel as well as other videos and full courses covering topics like this on our website at re.school. Thanks and goodbye.